Hi, everyone. I'm Andre Sr. with KTVU Fox 2 in the San Francisco Bay Area. We continue our COVID-19 coverage and the health effects of COVID-19 that it's having on people around the country. I'm joined now by Stanton Glantz. He's a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, to talk about a study that he looked into smoking, people who smoke and their effects, the effects that COVID-19 has on those folks who smoke cigarettes or e-cigarettes. Stanton, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's get right to it. What, what did your study find? We'll, get, we'll start with what your study uh, looked into and found, and then we'll get into the details in a moment. But tell me what your study looked into. Okay, well, we went and searched the entire peer-reviewed literature for research on the effects of smoking on uh, disease progression among people once they got sick with COVID. And what we found research from China, from Korea, and from the United States. And when we put it all together, we found that people who smoked about doubled their risk of disease progression, which is, was defined in a variety of ways, but generally needing to go into the ICU or even death. So when you're talking about uh, disease progression and smoking, we're talking about smoking cigarettes and e-cigarettes as well? Well, the, all that we had was data on smoking cigarettes. As far as we can tell, nobody's yet studied e-cigarettes. But we know that, that smoking does a lot of bad things to your lungs' ability to fight off disease. Smoking disables what are called cilia, which are little microscopic hairs in your nose and in your upper airways that trap and push viruses and bacteria out. Smoking also uh, depresses the innate immune function down deep in your lungs and triggers inflam inflammatory processes, all of which make you more susceptible to infection and make it worse. Now, e-cigarettes and COVID specifically haven't been studied yet, but e-cigarettes do all the same bad things to your respiratory tract and lungs as cigarettes do. So, and, and I didn't want to get to this part yet, but I, as, so, uh, as long as you mention it, uh, some people assume that um, e-cigarettes are, are better than regular cigarettes, but in the case of the studies that you looked into, uh, in terms of the cause of COVID-19 and the effects of people who smoke, you found that COVID-19 affects e-cigarette smokers and cigarette smokers similarly? Well, that, that's not quite accurate. What, no one has yet studied e-cigarette smokers and COVID specifically. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we do know is that if you look at the effects of smoking and e-cigarette use on your lungs, on the ability of your lungs to fight off infections, on the effect of e-cigarettes and cigarettes on inflammation in your lungs, those biological processes are the same. So you would expect that e-cigarettes would have the same effects as smoking cigarettes in terms of COVID, but nobody studied that specific question yet. But I do think that it's sensible, just, just like one of the strong implications of our research is that you know you should quit smoking in order to reduce your risks of, of COVID to getting worse. I think it's very sensible and logical to also quit using e-cigarettes. So let's get into the nitty gritty of, of what you looked into here to, 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 to come to the conclusion that you did here, um, showing the negative effects of smoking cigarettes um, and uh, battling COVID-19. If a smoker were to, in fact, get COVID-19, um, how badly uh, versus a person who didn't smoke will COVID-19 have in the body of a smoker? Well, once you get COVID, and it's important that we studied people who already had developed COVID, if you smoked, it about doubled the risk of your disease getting much more serious. And the different studies defined that in differing ways, but it was generally admission to an intensive care unit or even death. What kind of uh, worsening of the illness are we talking about? We know that smokers obviously inhale. Um, this is a disease that affects the respiratory system and my rudimentary understanding of, of how this all works, but what can you tell us about that? Well, one of the things, and this isn't our study, but this is work others have done. Uh, there's something called the ACE2 receptor on your, in your lungs, which is uh, you could think of as the doorway that COVID gets into cells through. And people who smoke have upregulated um, ACE2 receptors. So by putting the cigarette smoke in there, 
it's making it easier for the COVID to get into the cells and, and infect them. And also, we know that people who have pre-existing conditions, who have heart disease, who have lung disease, who have cancer, who have impaired kidney function, do worse when they get COVID. And smoking causes all of those conditions. So, so uh, in terms of, you said people who have these other diseases uh, are susceptible to the worsening of the effects, but are they worse off, or is a smoker worse off than people dealing with health issues that they can not necessarily control, um, like kidney disease yeah, versus? Mean, yeah, I mean, basically what we found is that smoking makes it all worse. That, that, that truly is, is, is something that uh, uh, people uh, need to remember. So let's talk about the, the details here. You looked into the studies that were done um, around the world, right? Uh, I think uh, I read in your report that China also did the study. Talk right. about uh, what makes the, you know, where you collected the information from and uh, the variety and, and um, how you are comparing all of these, uh, these different studies. Well, what we did is we went out and looked at the peer-reviewed literature. These are studies that have gone through some level of quality control by the scientific community. And we, we went into international databases of, of scientific research and found these 19 studies. And 17 of them were from China, one from was from Korea, and one was from the United States. And then we basically, it involved about 15,000 people or pardon me, about 12,000 people. And then we, we essentially averaged the results using some fancy statistical techniques called meta-analysis. And so when you, when you take all of the studies and put them together, you get this overall conclusion that smoking about doubles the risk of disease progression among people with COVID. What about the uh, the mortality rate? Uh, did this, did these studies look into the mortality rate of someone with co uh, that smokes and contracts COVID? Um, a couple of them focused on mortality, and again, the risk of mortality was increasing. the The, the problem that we had, or it was in, you know, this is a relatively new literature, and so the different studies used slightly different endpoints and a couple of them just looked at mortality others looked at ICU admission or mortality um, a few a couple of them looked most of them dealt with hot patients who are already hospitalized for COVID a couple of them looked at people who weren't yet hospitalized and if you smoked it increases the chances that you'll have to be hospitalized so just overall when you when you insult your lungs with with cigarette smoke, it makes everything about COVID worse. Now, just to be clear, catching it versus dealing with you know a smoker catching it, you can't catch it from smoking, but it just makes it. Uh, but if you do get it, that's the problem. Is is that what I'm understanding? Well, what that was what our study was. Our study was looking at among people who already had COVID, if they smoked, they did worse. There, there's not yet really any good data on whether or not smoking affects your risk of getting infected in the first place. Although we know that smoking increases your risk of getting infected with the flu, with, uh, with MERS, which is another coronavirus respiratory infection, uh, with tuberculosis, which is a bacterial infection, but it's, uh, it's still a respiratory infection. So my guess is, you know, a few months from now when we have a lot of data and the dust settles, we'll find that smoking increases your risk of infection too. But right now that's just a prediction based on what we know about the biology. There isn't yet any good data on that. So if, if you're twice as likely to have more complications from it, or uh, in terms of mortality, is there, is there a figure that you can put with that? Is it twice as likely that there would, there would be a mortality rate or a possible mortality rate? You know, I don't have that at the tip of my, at my fingertips. If you look in the paper, mm -hmm. there's a big table at the end, which is the summaries of all the studies and the specific endpoints they use, and you can pull it out of there. But I don't have, I don't have that fact memorized. We, we talked about in the information that you guys sent us, um, California and, and the way they uh, approach 
the the smoking uh, epidemic that we're dealing with. Um, how do you see California um, in terms of the fight against tobacco and now the fight against COVID-19? Well, California is doing pr- reasonably well compared to a lot of other places in terms of keeping the number of cases and deaths down. And I think there are many reasons for that. I think the the aggressive public health stance taken by a lot of our politicians is very important. But California's had a very aggressive anti-tobacco campaign dating back to 1988, when the voters passed the tobacco tax and devoted some of the money to anti-smoking efforts. And I think one of the implications of our study is that the low smoking rates we have in California because of this long investment in anti-smoking activities is contributing to why we're doing relatively well in terms of the COVID epidemic. Um, I I think, you know, this is a time to redouble the state's anti-smoking activities because they're paying huge dividends, I think, in terms of helping keep people from getting sick and if they get infected, have them, you know, not doing as badly. Uh, Were you able to do any studies yet to see, or or is this uh, a ways down the road to see, based on your low smoking rate, the state's low smoking rate versus the COVID-19 infections, have those studies been looked at yet? Is that something that you think that should be looked into in the future here? Well, nobody's done that kind of cross-state comparison, but it's definitely something I plan to do. What do you want to see happen next based on the information that you all have released, the study that you did uh, looking at all these 19 studies from around the world? What, what do you want to see happen next? Well, I think that the doctors and hospitals need to be starting to collect information on smoking and vaping and also using cannabis because while nobody studied it yet, you're still breathing in smoke when you use those products. And I think that needs to be taken into account when when assessing patients, when managing patients. I think that the states need to redouble their anti-tobacco efforts and anti-vaping efforts uh, to help people quit, to bring their risks down, and to have them uh, hopefully not do you know do better should they get infected. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pressure from the tobacco companies on on California and other states to cut back on their anti-tobacco activities. But uh, this is the time we need to put more energy into them because the relatively modest investment the states made over the years in reducing smoking, I think, is paying big dividends in helping uh, California manage the COVID epidemic. That's interesting. I don't think a lot of people have looked at it at that uh, uh, standpoint already. Um, I do want to agree. I I agree. That's why I'm uh, (laughs) making the point. Uh, I do want to ask you about, you know, when you talk about any study, uh, there, your report lists limitations. Um, Talk about the limitations and what we we could uh, glean from that information. Sure. One of the important limitations on these studies is that if you look at them, the rates of smoking that are reported are quite low. And uh, in fact, some people have, have said, well, the percentage of people, who, uh, of people who get COVID who smoke is below the general population. And that's been used as, to make an argument that, well, smoking somehow protects you from getting COVID. But in, what, what the reality is, is these people are coming into the hospital very, very sick. And it, it, when, when they're in that, and some of them aren't even conscious or they're on ventilators. And so assessing their smoking history under those very trying circumstances is really hard. So we think that the, that the studies are underestimating the amount of smoking. And because of the way the statistical analysis works, if, you're, if you have people who are really smoking, but you're incorrectly counting them as non-smokers, that leads you to underestimate the risk of smoking. So my guess is, is that as the quality of evidence gets stronger and we get better assessments of smoking behavior, our estimate of the risks of smoking are gonna go up higher than the about doubling of risk that we've reported. But, but even a doubling is a huge effect. You, you're looking at studies um, that are completed, but I, I did want to ask you, um, are there 
other studies ongoing right now linking COVID-19 to smoking? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of work going on here at the University of California, San Francisco. Um, we're routinely assessing tobacco smoking and vaping and cannabis smoking and vaping as part of the patient intake and screening. And that's being used to triage patients right now. And what we're planning to do in a few months after we've accumulated enough information is to start looking at that and uh, you know, seeing how does smoking and vaping both tobacco and cannabis impact uh, COVID risk and COVID disease progression. And there are many studies like this going on around the world right now. Stan Glantz, Professor of Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, looking into the issue of smoking and the effects uh, that smoking will have if you contract COVID-19. Uh, the, the information's out there uh, for those of you who smoke, so, so um, uh, it's something to uh, take into consideration. Stanton, I thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. Well, thank you.